Let's get this going. Oh, yeah, handles. We've got the big bear in the middle, aren't we? Big bear's always in the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's Advocate Footy Video. Finals time, boys. Finals time. Are you excited? You have the <laughs> smell of liniment in the air. It's, it's fresh grass. No? It's clearly not as excited <laughs> as you, Brad, but uh, I'm glad that, well, I'd like to say September when I talk finals footy, but it's not quite in the no. NTFL. Uh, it starts a week earlier, but I'm excited all the same. A couple of big matches coming up this weekend, Cam. Uh, Starting off the second semi final at, uh, at Wynyard for the first time since 1948, Wynyard hosting Olsen. Yeah, you'd think they'd be up and about. It's, yeah, as you say, a long time between drinks. But uh, yeah, a lot of changes for Wynyard. Mm. Uh, se seven of them, and they need to finalise their team obviously today. But um, yeah, a lot of changes. And Jordan, do you think that's an unsettling thing, or do you think that they'll just sort of slot back in pretty seamlessly? Uh, I probably would have said yes until. Uh the, the, the master coach Ross Lyon uh, when he rested all those players last year for Frio and then, then they went down to Skilled and, and did the unthinkable by beating Geelong so I know that's a long bow but uh, the quality of players that come in those seven guys um, all arguably could be in the, the team of the year if the NTFL had one so I think it's a scary prospect for Olveston uh, we need one lot of one by 107 points last week and then they get seven of their best players back in so no, good thing from, from Errol he, he got them cherry ripe and I reckon they're probably going to get the job done tomorrow. Olveston here though, any chance at all, Coley? Uh, it's the toughest, uh, toughest gig in footy. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't think that. I think, I think it starts with with Winnie. It starts with Sam Douglas in the ruck, and if he's 100 percent fit and firing to go, that's where, that's where Winnie get all their drive from. And uh, I don't think Olveston got anyone to go with Sam Douglas, and, and hence that's why they, they'll win the game. The Robins are probably the only team that have got close to Winnie on two occasions though this mm. year. They have shown signs that they can match it with them. Whether they can do that in a, in a finals like games, we'll obviously have to wait and see. Um, but they've shown with the pressure, if you get pressure around the ball carrier, um, then then anything is possible. And I'm sure Justin Hayes will be trying to instill that into, into his boys. Sure, and the uh, the next game obviously is on Sunday. It's an elimination game, and Latrobe and Penguin. This is a pretty interesting game. I mean, last week, a couple of points separated them, but yep. you have to look, Latrobe did have Jeffrey and Sculthorpe yep. out. So that's pretty significant, I think. Um, Jordan, your thoughts on this one? Um, I'd expect Latrobe to win. What do you think? I think this is the best game of the weekend, just quietly. I think this is an absolute cracker. Elimination final. Ned Perry trying to get his men into a into a fifth straight premiership into a couple of weeks and, and Peter Templeton Peter Templeton, sorry, uh, bringing the two blues basically off the bottom of the ladder and, and, and then trying to get them into a, a prelim the final year. Um, at Latrobe, with those two big inclusions of the of the forwards who have kicked I think about 150 goals between them. I think the Demons, with their finals experience, will probably just get the job done. But like we've seen on a couple of occasions, this well, th actually three out of the four times this year, Penguin have beaten Latrobe, which is which has got to give the boys uh, from from Pertec Oval some sort of belief, Colin. Yeah, yeah, I think there's, that's certainly in the in the back of in the back of Dale Perry's mind that Penguin do seem to have just to have the matchups for them. Uh, I think the game being at Latrobe, I think it helps Latrobe. Though it just gives certainly gives Skullthorpe a lot more room to move, uh, gives Jeffrey a lot more room to move. Um, I think he's, he's the wildcat, Jeffrey. I think he's formed the last... He's had a bit of a groin injury, so he's missed the last couple, and before that he hadn't been playing well. If he gets off the leash and kicks four or five goals, I think uh, he's, he's, the, he's the X factor and he's the reason why Latrobe can win the game. What do Penguin need to do to win, Cam? What did they do, do you think, well last week? And what, did they, what do they need to do to, to get over the line on, on Sunday? I think, yeah, just, just shutting down the space for, as, as, as Brad said there, to, to shut down the space for Sculthorpe, because if he gets the ball, marks it within 50 or 55 metres, he just pops them from everywhere, whether he's on the boundary or whether they put a, put in a, a loose man in defence to try and cut down that space, I'm not too sure, but Penguin did win it at, at La Tribe earlier in the year and I was at that game and they just, um, they were just fanatical at the ball and they, they won pretty well in the end really, but um, they'll need to bring plenty of that I, I would have thought to, to, uh, to be able to get the job done and in what you, you would have thought would be an upset if they could win. I think the one thing that, that can dis probably disrail the trove, and at times it has this season, is they're kicking for goal. As the, ru as the rubbish man just decides to empty the uh, bin from the boozer. Um, La Trobe at times this year, and it cost them against Wynyard, if, if they're kicking for goals off, and Sculthorpe can be one of the main mm. culprits of that. <laughs> he's, he's, kicked, he's kicked more, I think he admitted himself, he kicked more points than behinds, it's, uh, um, more points and goals. Yeah. Uh, if they're kicking his off, a little bit of panic could set in, and that's where Penguin could uh, capitalise. Yeah, and a big match-up finally on, on this game is uh, 
the, the matchup between uh, Josh Holland, who's last year's Bulldog medalist, and, and Toby Skeen, who's getting a bit of reputation for you know d doing a few good tagging jobs. And um, last week, sort of almost, I guess, touched Holland up a little bit. So um, yeah, it's a, that's a big matchup, isn't it, boys? Yeah, I think to Toby. I didn't, I didn't see much of him in previous years. I'm not sure if he, he's at the club or not, but. Uh, yeah, I've watched him, the couple of times I've watched him, he's been very impressive and, and not only does he shut down a bloke, gets his own ball as well mm. and is creative with that. So, yeah, if, if they can if they can shut down Holland, I don't think Cogden's as good a season as what he has in the past. Uh, yeah, Penguin, Penguin are, are a chance. So there we are, folks, uh, the NTFL boys. We're tipping Wynyard to have a week's break, uh, week's break and go mm. through to the grand final. I think so. And then probably Latrobe in another mouth-watering clash with Olveston for the prelim. Right boys, onto the TSL now. We'll just uh, obviously our coastal teams are done and dusted for this season. But Bernie just... not in the finals? No, mate, they're not. Your, Your boys. boys. You've um, you talked them up, premiership favourites, um, and you put the kiss of death on them. So. You're to blame for that, but um, even my boys, Denport, got a team in the development league finals, mate. <laughs> oh, you can't oh, claim that, name, Brad. Come on, I am. Mate. I've claimed it. What about the Bernie girls winning the premiership? Yeah, good effort. Actually, great effort by the Bernie girls. That was a great game of footy, that. <laughs> but boys, we'll focus on this week's games. We've got Storm and North Lonnie uh, on Saturday, and then Lauderdale and Glenorchy on Sunday, which yeah. is mm, don't know what to think about it. But our tips, boys. The Launceston game is great. They played six days ago in what was a bit of a grudge match mm. um, and uh, yeah six seven days later they face up again and, and play in a qualifying final yep. um, Chris Tarrant there's so many storylines to this game I, I reckon it's I reckon it'd be a cracker I think yeah, I think the storm just I think the storm might have just you know just been holding a little bit back maybe against the northern uh, North Launceston last week so I think they'll come out hard and I I think if you if you're framing a two a two still grand final mark, I think they're just the narrow favourites at the moment at the storm I think they've just got enough big blokes around enough quality around the big blokes off to win. I think the young bombers will, will win Ooh. again. To be honest, that's my that's my that's my thoughts. I think both bombers will win this week. Northern bombers and southern bombers. I think Lauderdale will win on Sunday, pretty comfortably over Glenorchy, and obviously Clarence is sitting it out this week. They got the luxury of a bye. So, mm. well, that's uh, I guess all with the the TSL. We'll move on to everyone's uh, favourite segments. Um, good call, bad call for all the loyal viewers that have stuck around. Four minutes of dross to 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 listen to this. Cam, you got the new ball? Yeah, I've got a, an interesting one for you here, Jordan. Um, I know you're a big fan of this player, but we'll, we'll see what you've come up with. It's the Smith and Best and Ferris winner, Scott Bryan, a runaway winner in that award, uh, will, he will win the Bulldog medal this year. Good call, bad call. Dogs, Bryan, my man. Um, great player. Uh, I could sit here for five minutes. Yeah, we know you could, mate. Wax lyrical yeah. about him. You love this man, don't you? Talk yeah. about dogs and, and what he does out in the footy field. But uh, bad call. They haven't won enough games call for mine. Um, he will poll very well in the games they've won, probably, what, six or seven? And I'm not sure whether they've got close enough. I think he's been the second best, like, Smithen's best player in a lot of losses, but I'm not sure the team's got close mm. enough to warrant the, yeah, the two or one Can he votes. get into the one or two votes? Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. the big thing, but I yeah. don't reckon he will. Bad call, bad I call. I tell you what, Smithen will win. That's best table at the Bulldog medal <laughs> dinner count. They do get froth, don't they? Oh, I love a frothy, the Smithen yeah, boys. They're, yeah, one dollar <laughs> and one for that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Coley, good call, bad call. Wynyard Recreation Ground mm. has the best canteen variety <laughs> on the coast. <laughs> I know you love a salmon oh. and a mixed, mixed bag of lollies. There. I must say, I must say, best salves on the coast, Wynyard. Old style. The golden sav. Old style, bit of, you know, not, not exactly healthy sav, but a great tasting sav. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's healthy. Oh, it's have, a, have a look at this. I don't care about health. Um, Great bag of mixed lollies. Went there the other day to get a two dollar bag of mixed lollies. They gave me four fifty cent bags, and it lasts me all afternoon. I mean, it's just great value for money. How just just lacking a bit on the chocolate content. Just a little bit more chocolate, ladies. That'd be great. But uh, look, I think Clubhouse Leader Winyard Football Club at the moment. How's the service? Though? How are the ladies? Yeah, I, I, look, I must say all the canines around the coast are pretty good. All, and the ladies and the, the odd man you see in there do a do a fantastic job and and serve me pretty well. So. Uh, Latrobe, uh, you're on watch again this Sunday. Watch out. And Cameron, last one for you. The Olsen Footy Club, where we are here, the Olsen Recreation Ground. The club's been a bit hard done by by not getting a uh, NTFL finals game this year. Very stiff. Absolutely they have. This is a great call, one of your best of the year. Paul, <laughs> Brad, but um, this is just, for mine, I don't like it at all. You finish second on the ladder. Um, there are a couple of games ahead of Latrobe. Latrobe get a home final this week. Mm. 
oldest and they finish second, they don't even get to that's play if, a game here at all. So that's if they lose this weekend to Wynyard that you reckon they should have the right to host a, the prelim? Absolutely. If they lose this weekend to Wynyard, which we we'll probably like expect that will happen, yep. they should be playing here in the prelim final for sure. They finish second. How can the second team not get a home final but the third team does? I just, I know there's a issue with the NWFA grand finals being played here, gentlemen's agreement, whatever, but for mine, you know, East, not, not good enough. Play yeah. the game at night, play it on a Sunday, just do something, get them, get them here. East Devonport uh, benefits sort of out of, out of that arrangement, yeah. don't they? Um, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not only the, um, the home ground advantage, it's the gate takings, the canteen, yeah. the bar, like mm. the, the club's losing out as well, so yeah, I don't like it. And for as great as it's nice for East Devonport to get a final and stuff, but you just don't get the atmosphere of girls from Park, I don't think. There's no. not a, you know, there's not the grandstands and the, because yeah. it's such a huge ground, I think you just lose a bit of atmosphere of the girls from Park, so. Now, good call, Cam. Good, good call. call. Well, that's it, boys, uh, for the first mm. week of a, of a finals edition. Thanks for joining us, mm. and uh, I guess we'll, we'll catch you again next week. See you next week. So.